This is Baghdad. All of this. The past folded into the present. Like the U-bend of the river Tigris, which carves out the city's southern edge. Iraq's capital is filled with seven million people of all sects. Sunnis, Shiites, Kurds, Yazidis, Turkmen, Christians. In shops and offices. Travelling in cars and buses. Just trying to live. Iraq's government and foreign diplomats are based in the high security green zone. Ordinary Iraqis live in the red zone, as do we. Sunnis have been here for centuries. But Shiites are now the majority. Oil is a major focus, of course. And water, in the area known through history as Mesopotamia, the land of the two rivers. In some areas, life in Baghdad has started to improve. But nearly five years after the war started, electricity is often non-existent. <laughs> and clean water can be hard to find. It has been a year since the US and Iraqis launched the Baghdad Security Plan. It was designed to restore order to the Iraqi capital after the slaughter of 2006. Baghdad is safer now, but not safe. The ever-present threat of bombers is always here, even in Karada, one of the best parts of the city. Barriers and gates are everywhere. The date palm tree, once a rich fruit of the Tigris and Euphrates, now its trunk is a poor man's blast wall. Religious parties are powerful here, and their militias are everywhere. So are the insurgents. Opinions about the presence of US troops differ here as much as they do in America. Shiites who once wanted the Americans to come now want them gone. They are confident. The Iraqi forces are the ones that should stay. They will be able to maintain the security. And there is no need for the American forces. And Sunnis who once fought against US troops now jump out of American helicopters to help them hunt down other Sunnis. Yesterday's insurgents hunting down today's insurgents. Plenty of grey area here. Baghdad is filled with people who are convinced that the worst is past. It is start to be better because, you know, because the, all the people of Iraq, Sunni, Shia, Kurdish, Turkish, Turkmen, all start to be understand, understand what they must be do. And yet also their neighbors, who think the worst is yet to come. Everyone is fighting to take over the other's position. We will not have a country, we will not have a democracy. And just a few miles away can seem like another planet. In South Baghdad, on the highway past Dora, a gun battle spills over into the morning rush hour. Bullets fly overhead. And closer. People are damaged here in ways that will take years to work out. 
in East Baghdad, two children in Zayuna neighborhood enjoy the holiday of Eid al-Adha. The brother, his eyes smiling at the camera, enjoys a rare day out. But his sister's eyes reflect the violence she has seen. Why is she scared? There was an explosion one day and she started to be afraid of everything. Ghazal Animal Market, 11 a.m. one Friday, the happiest place in Baghdad, a symbol of life returning to normal. Ghazal at noon the following Friday, the worst place in the world, now a symbol of things creeping back to disaster. Another Friday, another bomb. But within hours, shopkeepers trickle back. Again, a symbol of life returning to normal, except for the people who have been killed. Pick your street, pick your symbol. Just don't expect the people who live and die here to fit a foreigner's blueprint. Anyone who tells you they know which way Baghdad is going is a prophet or a liar. Or overtaken by events. <laughs>